Getting audio in time can seem a little bit confusing. It's not MIDI, so you can't quantize it, right? No, you can actually quantize audio, and here is how. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to introduce you to FlexTime in Logic Pro, the way that we can quantize our audio tracks just like we would with MIDI. It will focus today on quantizing rhythm, but there is flex pitch buried in there as well. So make sure you do subscribe to this channel so you can find out about that in a future video. Let's dive in right now and quantize some audio. All right, so I have a very simple guitar part here just as an example. So if I start playing this one, you'll hear it's a guitar line that's just a DI from one of my guitars and it's going through this Native Instruments guitar rig. A little bit of an AC30 type vibe from the amplifier here, and a little bit of a delay signal as well. A very simple, very quick line, and it sounds like it's mostly in time, but we could further tighten this up if we wanted to. There's a couple of ways to do this, and I'm gonna show you one, a very quick way, and two, a way with a little more control. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my flex time. That's this little one here and it shows my flex time menu items. And I can turn on flex time for different channels. So if I turn this flex time on for this track, you'll see that it then starts to analyze the track and it works out where all the transients are. Transients are the loud part at the beginning of every note. Every note has a transient and then a sustained part. This algorithm is basically picking out those transients so that we can move those around. And if we move the transient, we'll move the whole note. Now at the moment, it looks like everything's lining up quite nicely, but if I zoom in here, you'll see that they are a little bit off. Not everything is perfectly lined to the grid. It's pretty close. And to be honest, I'm, I'm not sure if I'd even want to quantize this because I'd be squashing some of the human feel of it. But let's say that we really absolutely needed to we could certainly tighten this up a bit. Now here's the really quick way and easy way to do it. Once you've turned it on, you've now got a new option at the top here in region called quantize. And currently quantize is turned off. But this quantize means that you can turn it on and you can lock it to a particular value. This particular value means that as it moves, it's gonna snap it to the nearest value. So the nearest eighth note or the nearest 16th note. That's snapping it to the nearest point on one of these grids. So you can see here, for example, we've got 16th note grids, but everything's landing on pretty much an eighth note. So if I just select an eighth note here, it's gonna snap it, and you can see them all moving there to snap to on the grid. Really quick, really easy, doesn't take too much time at all. Now, obviously there are some differences. There are some little problems that you could have along the way. If it goes through and quantizes everything, a nice clean DI signal like this, not gonna struggle too much with that. However, sometimes you might find one of these moved a little bit too far, but you have some controls here to be able to move this. Let's say this one, for instance, was in the wrong place. I could move that one and snap it to a different line. It would sound terrible now if I played it back. It now sounds out of time, but you could even remove that at any time. If you hover over it and just click this little X that's here, it moves it back, nice and easy. Now it all sounds like it's gonna be back in time. Much nicer. So you could do that. You can quantize it really quickly and then just remove the hits that don't quite work or shift them to the right spot if it's moved it to the wrong one and you're away. Now, if you fancy keeping in some of that more human aspect, that more kind of slightly subtle off time type of feel, because let's face it, humans aren't perfectly locked to a grid all the time. You can come down here, open up this more section and just reduce the strength. Maybe clicking and dragging it down to somewhere like 80% will just allow a little bit of variety to these hits. You can't see them very much at the moment. If I reduce this even further though, you'll notice it starts to move it closer to where it used to be. So it's sort of like 100% is on the grid, 0% is back where it used to be, and a percentage between moves it around to lock it further or closer to the grid. So that strength manipulation is really useful because if you lock something perfectly to the grid, it's gonna sound a little too robotic. That might not be what you're after. Sometimes it might be, but it might not be all the time. So you can reduce the strength, allow it to have a bit more of a human feel. Now let's take a look at another way. Maybe this way would be better if you just wanna move one or two hits. I'm gonna turn flex time view off over here. That puts it all back to normal. I'm gonna mute this first track and I'm gonna unmute this second track. It's actually exactly the same as this first track. I've just copied it down here to use it as a second example. This time I'm gonna select the track and I'm gonna tap E on my keyboard 
or tap this little pair of scissors at the top here, and that will open up the editor. Now we can see basically the same thing at the bottom here. This is our audio editor. In here, I can also turn on flex time. When I turn that one on, it's going to ask, do you want to turn on flex time? I absolutely do, yes. And it will scan and work out where the transients are. This is a very short piece of audio, like just four bars of audio or so. If this was a much longer piece of audio, it's going to take some time. You'll probably see a loading bar of some kind as it goes through two minutes, three minutes, four minutes of audio. That's okay, that's normal. Now I can come in here and I can move these hits individually if I prefer. And that's where this little fine control really comes in handy. Let's take this hit here, for example. I can see that that hit is definitely off and I want to move this transient back onto that hit. Now, let me zoom in a little bit. As I hover my mouse over the top section, you can see this one transient marker is appearing. And if I click that, it adds a single transient in here. The problem is though, if I then move this transient, it actually moves everything ahead and everything backwards, depending on where I move it. All these other transients are moving as well. That's not ideal, that's not what we want. So let me take out that, just the X again. Now as I hover and move down to the bottom half, we can see this symbol coming up. And this basically means that if I click on a transient, it's going to add the transient to the left and right in order to protect this particular space, isolate it from everything else. If I click that, you can see now a transient there and a transient there, and they become fixed points. So now when I drag this one around, only the one transient is moving. So I can drag and move that one to here. Wonderful, right? All done. Now you'll probably be noticing there's a little gap that's appearing here. This little gap is gonna be a bit of a problem if we leave it the way it is. The reason this gap is appearing is because of the algorithm that's currently selected, which is slicing. There are different algorithms, which basically means different ways that the computer divides up and organizes this flex time. Slicing is often used on drum kits. If you think about a drum kit, for instance, you wanna kind of cut out the drum sound and move it forwards or backwards. And that's exactly what slicing does. Cuts out that sound, moves the whole thing forward, which might leave a gap at the end doesn't really matter because drums ring out, they end, that's fine. With the guitar here though, we want that kind of melody to run on and, and be a part of a, a sort of legato passage. We don't want gaps suddenly appearing, that's not gonna sound great. So if I just change this algorithm simply to something like polyphonic, which is used to dealing with multiple notes, multiple rhythms, multiple melodies, that should handle this a lot better. If I select that, you can now see it all stitched back together so now effectively I am compressing one side, which is in this white here, and stretching the other side in this gray. It's really important to understand those differences between algorithms because that will change the sound of one or the other. If you start moving hits a long way and slicing is engaged on this guitar part, you're gonna have sudden gaps and it's gonna feel jittery and jumpy. Whereas polyphonic is gonna have a much nicer, smoother tone. So that's how you do it. That's how you quantize audio really quickly, really easily, either a fast quantize everything approach or a specific targeted approach in the audio editor. I hope you've enjoyed that. Do consider subscribing if you're thinking about picking up some more Logic tips. I release a lot of videos about Logic Pro, just little tips and tricks here and there that might just improve your workflow or answer that question that you've always been wanting to ask. Until I see you in that next video though, I will catch you later.